So I'm not presenting my research, or maybe I just mentioned it. I wanna give like just a, some kind of tutorial on this uh, mysterious spaghetti neurons, which actually scientifically is called tractography. And then I move to like structural and functional connectivity. And at the end, I have some like most recent applications, like in considering that we all have been in, like in isolation. So some people also have been trying to look at uh, change in, in due to people in self-isolating and quarantine and all these things. So at the end, there is something maybe uh, kind of actual. Uh, so if you can go to the next. So this is a, a section of the brain in this thing. What I was saying is I would call uh, spaghetti neurons. So these are like, uh, it's actually a sagittal means like in this plane of the, of the brain and like uh, I will going to show I'm going to show you briefly how this is constructed and uh, uh, how then we move it uh, further on so in the next slide if you can go there is a, this is actually myself uh, the quality is not good because this well, I uh, was taken like years ago in an old scanner in, in France but uh, it's to give you an idea more or less how it looks like and unfortunately, we don't have in our brains these colorful things. Uh, so colors are more like a uh, representation for us in computer graphics for the direction. Like red means this direction. I don't know if you can see my camera. And blue is more like from top to bottom. And green is like from the back of the head to the, to the front. And this is constructed with MRI. But if you go to, to the next, uh, I have another example that this was not, uh, uh, it's not MRI, but as I mean, you can construct, like reconstruct these tracks in many different ways. Like this, uh, you see on the uh, right is more like, uh, uh, it's constructed with uh, other regular uh, tracers. So it means we, is a mouse and has been killed and someone is injected. Uh, uh, adenovirus to like that is like marking the entire tracks and also there are other ways and uh, on the left side there is a funny was a funny paper that was saying uh, uh, because it, it's a cat scan so cat is another image modality and there was a cat like a lion inside the cat so it was a cat in a cat and was also another modality used for uh, uh, reconstructing tracks in the brain Usually these are invasive and I'm not going to talk about this. Uh, so usually they're done on animals that have been killed for scientific purpose. Uh, but the, the, the things I'm going to tell you later in, in this talk are more related to uh, magnetic resonance in humans, so they are not, uh, uh, they're not invasive. So in the next slide, uh, so uh, how do we start from, where do we start? Is we start from the fact that uh, uh, we have water, you know, water, and water, uh, we have also water in the brain. And what is happening is that water in, uh, in the axons of the neurons is confined by some membrane. And what is happening is that it's taking the shape of the axons. So what is happening is that with the magnetic uh, resonance imaging, we can reconstruct this, uh, uh, like, in more specifically, how is the direction of the water in the axons? And uh, in the next slide, if you can go. So if you imagine like, you know, uh, if you take a, pi a picture, it's made by pixel. So a picture is made by a, a series of squares that are representing. Usually we, what we have in MRI are voxel in 3D. And in this 3D representation, we have like, we reconstruct from different angles from the big MRI machines. And we have like uh, in each singular location, like you see, you see all of this ellipsoid, uh, we can re reconstruct the probability of finding water. If you look carefully with a bit of creativity, you can see that this ellipsoid kind of have, uh, each of them singularly have some kind of direction. So you see there is like a, a, an ellipsoid that is kind of oriented somehow. So, and the idea is that we extract like the main direction of, uh, of each individual elements and we connect it. 
And while we are doing this, like connecting all these things, then we have this final uh, like tracks pictures that I show you uh, at the beginning. And this is useful uh, for many things because, for example, uh, you, in this way you can reconstruct the tracks in the brain of a patient before uh, like doing surgery. And also you can extract third more complicated, more advanced biomarkers. Like if you go to the next one, ah, of course, uh, I forgot. So this uh, the, that I mentioned, it, the, this reconstruction is the simplest model. So this was the, this is very old, but people have been doing more advanced uh, geometrical analysis in the in each of these voxels. So that like because you can imagine this kind of representation just with the uh, probability distribution with ellipsoid is not very good in case you have like fibers that are crossings or they are like touching almost uh, each other. So I make this uh, uh, this meme with Drake to show that. Uh, mo most of people now doing the analysis don't like any more this representation I show you, but they like more the uh, uh, defenses one that are on the right. Okay, apart doing these improvements, uh, if you go to the next one, apart doing these improvements, we uh, we try to make like for not only for not for surgical planning, but more for like extracting biomarkers something fancier. So we wanted um, what we've been doing like in the last like more than decade uh, in this kind of field of research is that to move from this like spaghetti neuron that I was saying on the, you see on the left to something a bit more comprehensible like uh, this graph you see at the bottom. And the way that we do it is that we take, uh, we take all these uh, fibers bundles reconstructed uh, as I uh, told you uh, before on the left, and we put together the um, some neuroanatomy, some subdivision of the brain we have from uh, previous studies, and we like uh, we represent uh, like all the connection going from one part to another part. We simplify and we add, add just a, a small line, like like connecting two dots. So that uh, so as I was saying, so so that we can move from this uh, bulge of uh, spaghetti on the left to uh, something at least vaguely more manageable, like this brain network uh, at the bottom. It doesn't seem a big deal, but at least this is allowing us many things. It's allowing us to construct uh, 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 biomarkers. Is kind of also standardizing. Like if we have different different people, we can then. Uh, uniformizing it and in fact if you go on the uh, next one ah uh, so the text disappeared but what uh, what was this in this slide was that uh, like I was if you actually imagine like that you have two groups for example like let's say some group of people with uh, Alzheimer like on the left another group of people uh, on the right like once you have done this simplification from spaghetti neurons to all these networks, uh, things came easier and actually you can do some kind of statistics and compare the networks of the two groups. So because now you have like a population and you have a more standard way of comparing it. And as I was saying, in this case, it's not for uh, surgical planning, but it's more like for uh, finding biological difference. Of course, this is more like the expression, like you are not seeing like all the things related, for example, Alzheimer, you don't see like the, uh, the, the misfolded protein, like uh, beta amyloid are depositing and they're making uh, uh, like some kind of neuronal loss or apoptosis. You see just the effect, which is like the reduced less spaghetti neuron. So you see just the effect, but at least is allowing you to kind of differentiate two groups. In fact, uh, like in the, okay, yeah, yeah, you can go in the other slide. Uh, this is what I meant that you can find differentiation. Like this were uh, something I did that I compare two groups of people and uh, I think these were exactly Alzheimer and non-Alzheimer and elderly matched people. And these were like the distance, the difference that we found. That means that 
all the Alzheimer people didn't have or have less of these connections at population level. So not a singular person, but, and, and this, I mean, it can further help uh, uh, with further things related to the, to the study of Alzheimer or other disease. If you go to the next, so some people have been went further. So it's not just looking statistical like connection and connections because once you have a graph, things can go can be more complicated and advanced. Like they were looking at uh, applying all the all the things we have learned from complex networks, so that they weren't really abstract. Uh, looking at complex features in the in networks and if you get further and what also i we like one of the students when me did she she was like comparing this um, look, looking at the correlation of this kind of effect in these networks and genetic factor like because uh, as you were telling probably there is some this is like an intermediate uh, uh, phenotype uh, like from the gene like from the a gene of Alzheimer to some effect, biological effect, and in the end, what we see is the difference in this uh, network. Uh, if you go to the next, so so far I only told you about the structural point of view of the brain, but uh, there is another way that we measure the. Um, there is another way that we measure the um, that we can represent connections in the brain and is looking at another type of uh, correlation, not related to structure, but more to the function. Uh, what I mean to function, first I have to mention what is that, like uh, we can not, with magnetic resonance imaging, we not only measure like the distribution of water, but, but we can also look at uh, uh, how much blood uh, releases oxygen in a period of time. So if you see, or now here on the image on the, uh, on the right, it's time. So we, uh, this, there is a modality called the function MRI where we acquire several, we make several scans at, at different time points and we see kind of the dynamics of the, of the blood. Because like you have to imagine that the blood in this case is not just related to structure but is also changing in time. Like if you are like, uh, holding your fist or holding a ball in your fist, probably the brain area of the sensor motor is much more activated than other parts. Or also there are the, the, the there is a famous nectar for related to like consciousness that is uh, as a specific also dynamic. So in this case, we, we look at uh, the function and probably I guess you are wondering how do we do, we convert this, uh, into connection maybe you go to the next if you go to the next okay i don't tell you but because maybe otherwise you go to sleep with my same tone of voice so this is a temporal acquisition what you see in line for the three points uh, three area of the brain uh, like the posterior cingular cortex and media prefrontal uh, uh, cortex and the ipsy, ipsy, uh, like, I want to ask you, what do you notice in time? Like, you see here, green, uh, this kind of green is one area, and yellow and orange are two areas. Like, what do you notice? It's kind of like higher amplitudes. Yeah. Opposite. Opposite. What well, we'll say higher amplitudes. I don't know. It says host. I don't know who host is because it's. Ah, Freddie, Freddie, Freddie. It was not me. It was somebody else. I have no oh, idea. It was Patrick. Patrick, sorry. Oh, okay, Patrick. Patrick is said also. higher amplitudes. Just higher? Well, actually, someone say opposite. I said opposite, yeah. So, yes, this is like what I 
may, I don't know if I was very fast, but this is the, uh, exactly the idea is that this uh, yellow and orange kind of overlap. So yellow is PCC and orange uh, MPF. So yellow is uh, posterior triangular gyrus and orange is the medial frontal cortex. You see kind of overlap. The yellow and the orange. See, do you agree with me or no? Yes, we do. I think we do agree, yes. It's only you two or the others are gone? The yeah. other ones are just muted and without a video. Because we're, we're the host. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's not only our we three. No, no. <laughs> so, okay. So the idea is that these two are kind of correlating and the other one is anti-correlating. Like when the hemodynamic response is going down, the other one is going up. When the other one is going up, the other one is going down. So like the opposite was the... And this means that anyway, they are correlating. So it's that we have... A, is the very the way the this correlation is how we can construct this uh, this kind of brain network in the same way instead of uh, measuring the uh, like the strength the, the number of fibers going we measure the strength of correlation so if you go in fact to the next then this is like some people have also noticed that in the normal state of the brain, like this, uh, like default mode network, when, like, if I ask someone to not do anything and just lie in the MRI machine, close the eyes, uh, there is this network that is always active. And someone has noticed that there was, uh, if we were considering the correlation, there were uh, like there was a something like a gradient. Uh, in the brain, how this correlation was happening. Uh, I'm going very abstract now, but with this correlation, but it's also interesting that if you go in the other slide, that it's common to many other species. So there is some kind of organization in the brain with all the mammals kind of having the same thing. Like all the motor cortex is here, all the vision is here. And if you do a functional connectivity, there is a correlation of the same area. And it's common to all the mammals, like from including mice, humans, monkeys, and all these things. So it's a further proof that like this kind of uh, connectivity analysis is kind of useful. And also, also if someone is doing an experiment on mice, uh, is not completely up in the air. Like, uh, if you go to the next one, so I told you before, like that we can look at the uh, difference. And in fact, here I'm like posting like uh, this is again that I'm taking two groups of people. I think these were autism and uh, typically developed in children and matched with age. And if you can see here, I, I think I put on the on the first uh, uh, like uh, axial view of the brain like the functional connections the structural connection which were different and on the like on the central field like there were the the functional connectivity that were different like in this way of correlation analysis like which area is uh, was coactivated and they were different of course because functional activation not necessarily follow the uh, the structure architecture of the brain. And if you go further, so finally, probably something that is more uh, related to uh, recent events. So someone was mentioning that, not someone, I mean, there's been a paper recently published that uh, putting together not only the, uh, the networks we have in the brain, but the networks in, our life, like putting together behavior science and uh, brain networks, uh, because like people have also their own network of friendships. It's not just the network in the brain. And what was the study measuring was like people that they were like uh, 
kind of staying in self-isolation and people that were anyway still kind of uh, being able to do uh, to, to meet other people and there was a, a from the functional point of view from the they, it was a functional study not the structure so the other thing i told you uh, with the correlation they noticed that there were some kind of difference between these two groups of course this can be especially right now this can be a speculation like uh, if staying at home because of covid is changing your brain or not or if you have always been uh, uh, your brain in a certain way that you tend to also this this is uh, you should we should not make a strong conclusion on this but the idea was that people which tend to have a small or not interact with each other like more introvert staying at home all these things have practically a different functional uh, uh, network activation than people more outgoing but of course probably we, sh we should investigate if the point of view like uh, for mental health if being at home is kind of uh, having an effect and now i move to something weird <laughs> so okay this is uh, for people they know that i'm used to do also painting and sculptures so this was a kind of installation i made uh, uh, in the Hong Forest in Zurich. Uh, it looks, in reality, it's less creepy than you see in the picture. Uh, because, I mean, when I was putting these things, I was with other friends, there were people passing by, you know, people were just laughing. Now in this picture, it seems like a horror movie. But uh, what I wanted to put together was this, that uh, we, that studying, uh, I'm not only interested in neuroscience, I've also been interested in mycology and also what uh, I wanted to, I, I kind of kind of end up realizing in the last period is that there are uh, other networks in nature which are not just uh, uh, the brain, in, the networks in your brain or the networks uh, with your friendship or from the other paper, but there are networks also between uh, plants, especially there are some mushrooms that are uh what you see actually mushrooms is just a fruit but for each mushroom there is a large network underneath and it, this is actually allowing the connection communication of uh, uh uh between plants like if you go to the other uh, next slide so indeed there were uh, even researchers that showing that uh, trees using uh, both the roots and the mycelium so the the structure of some mushrooms like they kind of communicate each other and i know this is kind of completely off topic or at least it looks like that like from the networks of the brain but i would like to close to something that is not uh, uh, focused always in human brains but like related to the fact that there are other na networks in nature and with uh, maybe it's a hippie point of view but we should also uh, try to understand more the language of nature and and I'm I, at least I want to share that uh, we should look for parallelism of the networks we have in our brain or our lives and those that are in the in nature like this connection of mycelium uh, fungi in the between plants and if you go to the next uh, okay this is like uh, the summary so I, I hope I managed to show you like uh, what are that there are some uh, spaghetti neurons and uh, I show you like how I reconstructed and they are useful for uh, like planning surgery and we can make also more complicated uh, uh, representation with the networks and that they can be used as a biomarker and these are like my contacts if you want to reach me at some point.